side here to Buff State. Hello everyone, I'm Steve Warzela alongside former LA King and Plattsburgh standout Chris Panic. It's great to have you with us. Well, Canisius comes off a split last weekend against Bentley, and for Army, they are winless in three games dating back to December 5th when they played Sacred Heart. But tonight, Chris, it's going to be a big weekend for both teams. Certainly a big weekend race for, for the top four spots here in Atlanta hockey. Yep, and they were able to keep that four spot with that split against Bentley. Now, one way to do that is both these clubs will look to their big guns. Two players that can make defenses look like fools with their pants on the ground. And let's start with Canisius and Atlanta hockey's top score in Corey Conacher. Well, wow, Corey's been awesome. Seven five. So he's been awesome. And for Army, although they've lost three straight or haven't won in three games, they have a juggernaut of their own, and that's Atlanta hockey's second leading scorer in Cody Amalusic. Oh, Cody Amalusic has been awesome also. I think you are going to play together tonight, and that's going to be a pretty dynamic line. Back in November, Army defeated Canisius in the two-game series. Canisius looking for some revenge this time around. A great Atlantic hockey contest. When we come back, don't go anywhere. This game is not on Fios, not on the dish, and never on satellite, only on Time Warner Cable Sportsnet. Zoop looking up ice, still with the puck, working it through center, taps it over off the skate of Conacher. He'll drop it down off his stick to Kostic. Conacher again back to the point, bouncing puck. Zoop holds it in, flies at the half wall to Kostic. Conacher up to the point for Zoop. They start sliding around. Zook at the point. One timer score! Conacher unloads, buries one. Upstairs where Mama puts the kids to bed and the grips are on the board first. One nothing. Great racing. Parker, the first one there. Gets it right back up. Ice for Kostic into the zone. Kostic shoots and he plays his one right past the net. Lewis looking across ice. Long break. Gets behind Parker. Long break. The backhand. He scores! What a move by Longpre, the backhander, as he roofs it past Lowen, and they tie this game at five. Our camera crew here at the Buffalo State Sports Complex. Scarcella back to Hudson, steps up, rifles one, he scores! The moose is loose, Carl Hudson fires it past the goaltender, 4-1 Canisius on the power play. The All ball two down, here's Atkinson in on goal, backhander score! Atkinson slips it five hole, and just like that, one minute in the second period, they tie it up at two. The circle area, then Ruback clears back the blue line. Held in, Ruback second attempt, his pass ahead for Pullman. Pullman gets submarined at center as he gets up at it by Ryan Kaufman. And right back in, here's Amherst, the shot score! Takes a 3 1 lead. Wow, well, there's the example. First one in there will be Foam. Foam leaves it behind the net now for Gatto. Gatto flips that one off the stick. And ahead, moving into the zone is Haychuk. Haychuk into the corner. Still with the puck. Dashes it off for a second. Spins it back down low. Broken up by Danowski. Up the boards for Kenny. Trying to work it past Foam. Staying strong on the half boards. Rocco back down low for Foam again. Foam hits the brakes. Using his skates, kicking it over to Rocco. Spins off another check. Still with the puck is Rocco in the corner. He gets pushed from behind by Love. He'll tap it behind the net. Haychuk getting there first. Now broken up as Rock will send it along the near boards for Kenny. Foam hits into the board. Penalty coming up to Niagara. It'll be against Foam. It's going to be interference, the call against Niagara. This is going to be the fifth penalty against the Purple Eagles, Jeremy. And another opportunity for Canisius on the power play. And just taking a look around here at Dwyer Arena, we have a sellout crowd, 2,100 on hand here. And you see along the back row, Steve, is from our vantage point. We've got people standing behind the aisles. Lots of folks just kind of filling the arena here. And it ties last year's all-time high crowd, March 1st, 2008, versus Robert Morris here at Dwyer Arena. Season average up to 1665, so 2,100 people. 2,100 people on hand for this wow. game. Fantastic. That's, that just shows you that more people would like to get involved with college hockey. When you get a game like this, and it's a, it's a good one at that. So a power play now for the Griffs. Bouncing free, loose, Pagliaro dives out and pokes it away. Pagliaro's an aggressive goaltender. He will do that. He will come out of his net. He will take chances. Back to the point. Held in again for a moment for the Griffs. And now it's a two-on-one shorthanded. The outside. Here's Goodwin. Waiting. The shot. Score! Goodwin walking in shorthanded. Three goal lead for the Purple Eagles. What a play by Goodwin. I mean, he gets caught. them all year long at this point, and they are, they just, they've got no quit. Here's another chance. A breakaway. Miranoff racing in. The shot score! Two in a row. Miranoff buries. And it's a 4 nothing game for Niagara. 
as is a nightmare scenario for Canisius. And for a 4 nothing lead, two shorties. Well, the momentum has definitely swung in favor of Niagara with two short-handed goals. Not like they were apart. They were no more than less than a minute apart of those goals, if that. So, um, Niagara definitely in the driver's seat. Heidinger loses the plug again. Here's another chance for other side. Down the line. Here's Ross in the zone. Sends it across. Fans on his shot. Trying to catch Zanet. Zanet with it again. In traffic. Dangling through four grips. Zanet will just work it back to the point. Sent right back in. Solid score! In front, deflected. Five, nothing. Purple Eagles, three shorthanded goals. Have, have you ever seen three shorthanded goals on the same power?